it's clear that our community here in Canada is not them over there. There are two different places. There are Ukrainians in Canada, which is a place, and there are Ukrainians in Ukraine, which is a different place. And that, I think, is a fundamental and obvious kind of point, and yet I think we forget it very, very often. Over there, they're not us, and over here, we're not them. <coughs> We haven't been them for a very long time, nor have they been us for a very long time. So when we talk about them and us, our place, Canada, their place, Ukraine, the linkage, the relationship between the two of those places, I think one of the first things we have to talk about is what is that cause that somehow brings everyone in this room here together today, regardless of who your parents were or when they came or what political positions they took in the community, what church they attended or didn't attend. I want to make it very clear at the beginning, like I just said, all maps are distortions. They are selections. They are never complete. You have to always assume that the person that's giving you a map that, say, shows you where the Ukrainian halls are in Toronto, wants you to get to the hall. But there are some people who make maps that show you how not to get to things, who try to confuse you with maps. Today you're going to have to listen to me and decide whether I'm speaking to you from my heart uh, in the hopes that what I say to you will help us as a community, that I have a good purpose, a good intention, or you may say he's distorting things, he's giving us a map to mislead. That I'll leave to you. What I'm going to do is try to tell you a little bit of a story about our community, Nasha Ramada, and the cause. And if you looked at the poster that invited you to come here today, that was the subject, the cause, as if we all know what the cause is. And as we were being introduced, there was a reference to the cause of the Ukrainian diaspora being Ukraine's independence and freedom. I submit to you that the two are not the same thing. As was also pointed out, I think you must have read my notes before I sat down. <laughs> As was also pointed out, Ukraine has been an independent state. It's re-emerged, if you like, in Europe since 1991. Nearly two decades have gone by. And I think it's fair to say that many of us are somewhat confused, unhappy, disappointed, uncertain about the course of Ukrainian political life. Reflecting on these kinds of issues, what is the cause that our community should be organized around and should serve? Thinking about it, trying to come up with some ideas to share with you today, I realize that there really is no black or white answer to this question. One of the first things I'm going to talk about is the issue of the whole of the more and its commemoration. How do we hallow the memory of the many millions of Ukrainians who died during this genocidal great famine. Well, what's happened in Ukraine? Very little. A law was passed in 2006 declaring that the Holodomor was an act of genocide. In 2006, November, we're now essentially almost in 2010. That law has still not been translated officially into English. How can a government of 50 million people declare something to be genocide not even translate that most fundamental of documents into English, Stidheimba. So we have an independent Ukraine, we've had an independent Ukraine for 20 years. What do we have here to show for it, for all that effort, for all that organizational work? How many senators do we have who are of Ukrainian heritage when we have 1.2 million people? How many of our people, you and me, have been appointed to some of the federal boards? How many of us are recipients of the Order of Canada? How many of us have posts at universities? In 1946, Bogdan Panchuk, who I've told you before, teacher from Saskatchewan, volunteer overseas, serves with distinction in Europe, is still remembered when I was in, in Europe in the 1980s and doing my doctoral research. I met British Foreign Office officials who still remembered Panchuk. That's the kind of impression he made, because he was going to do something, and he did. Panchuk came back to Canada in 1946, just at the end of the war, and came to Winnipeg and met with the entire executive of the Ukrainian-Canadian Committee, who, because it was then known, 
and said, ladies and gentlemen, well, it's old gentlemen then, gentlemen, we in our country, in Canada, as Ukrainian Canadians, do not have unity. We do not actually have strength in unity, the model of Kuk. What we need is to consolidate, build on our strengths. And what are our strengths? Well, we have tens of thousands of pioneers and immigrants who've come here and who've contributed to the development of Canada. Nobody denies that. We have a large number of people, some of them geographically concentrated in Western Canada, but now spread across the country. We've proven our loyalty in the Second World War because we served as volunteers. You know, we weren't like the Francouza that ran off into the woods. We volunteered. Okay, and we served. And we now should go to the government from a position of strength. We have the committee. We should save our DPs. That was his primary focus. And indeed, he did. They did. That group of people did. And I'm thankful, because I probably wouldn't have been here otherwise. I would have been in the KGB and Vancouver basement somewhere. Um, <laughs> I, says Panchuk, want Cook to promise me something. <clears throat> <laughs> So baby Panchuk is going to say, Pavlo, I want you to promise me something. And he called it the Renaissance Plan. I mean, they're kind of an interesting thought. He said, we have to get rid of all our, what he called, two-by-four halls. Every organization has a demuka. And there's 15 people over there and 25 over there. Sell those halls. Build community centers, which we can share, which will have all the facilities. Publish an English language journal for youth to get them interested, right? Uh, what other things? He said, um, have you, memorial homes, what he called United Ukrainian Cultural Centers. No more building of two, point, uh, two by four halls. Let's have common community schools and educational programs. Let's provide resources for the relief team. So basically what he was saying is, let's take what we have and let us consolidate that wealth to become influential. Let's have a new constitution for the Ukrainian Canadian Committee Congress. One person, one vote. Let's have more professionalism when it comes to lobbying and representing our community. Um, let's have things, and these are my ideas now, guided tours for every Canadian Ukrainian youth to Ukraine. Learn about Ukraine. We don't need to worry so much about Ukrainian language schools here when there's a whole country over there supposedly speaking Ukrainian. Let's send our children there. Let's sell off the properties. Let's consolidate our wealth into scholarships. Let's mark our presence with plaques and statues and granting bodies and enrich and ensure the interest of that huge constituency of 1.2 million people. I said a few moments ago, what's in it for me? Right now, join UNO, join Liga, join Pla whatever you want to join, and you have to give money, you have to give your time and energy and resources, and it may be fun and it may be personally rewarding, but most people have so many other distractions that they just don't see the point. Well, the point is to increase our influence here. If you want more Ukrainian senators, if you want more Ukrainians to be chosen as judges, if you want more Ukrainian professors, if you want more Ukrainians in the senior levels of bureaucracy, if you, and I'm going to pitch this very bluntly, want your children and your children's children to do well in this place called Canada, we as a community have to have more influence. And right now, we do not have significant influence. The only way we are going to be able to have a cause that will actually have a consequence is if we prove to all those many hundreds of thousands of Canadians of Ukrainian heritage who are not currently involved in our community that by joining us, by returning to us, by helping us consolidate our wealth, they will benefit in their lives in Canada. And I think that should be our cause for our 120th anniversary.